Hi, my name's Mandy and welcome to my YouTube channel, Picketty Stitch. Today I'd like to show you a couple of advent gifts I've made, a couple of works in progress, and because it's such cold, chilly weather, I thought I'd pull out all my Molly and Freya tops and show you those, and also a little cheeky fabric haul. <music> So I thought to start off today by talking about the jumper that I'm currently wearing. This is the Betty and Judy Lodge sweater designed by Amy Apel for the Poison Girl. This is a paid for pattern and you can purchase this from Ravelry or their website, The Poison Girls. I'll put a link in down below. So what can I tell you about this? Well, it's knit top down, all in one, so you have no seams. And that's my favorite way of knitting a jumper. So um, yeah, the size range is quite diverse. I think it started at 30 inch bust and goes all the way to a 56 inch. I have made one adaptation to this and that was this ends waist high it is a vintage style jumper and as i get older i realize that waist do um do not fit me uh, so i tend to when i get to the waist shaping you go in and then what i tend to do is start to increase again and go out so the jumper is longer so i'll just stand up and show you so as you can see I've gone in and then I've gone out again. I love the detail here and I'll come a little closer and show you the colour work there. And of course it's got the two holly uh, sprigs on. So uh, yeah, I think it's got a real vintage vibe. Uh, I love this detail as well in the sweater. It's got like two, it's like a little tuck the shaping so yeah the judy and the betty and judy large jumper i can just imagine someone wearing something like this can't you in the 50s in vermont <laughs> and, so uh, what can i tell you about the wool well it's a bergere de france wool i purchased this wool from holly's Aberdashery quite a while ago now. The main colour is in the colourway Corrida and this colour, the contrast, is in Natural. Um, this is a sport weight, it's the sport um, range and it's an Aran weight, okay? Or worsted, some people will say worsted, but it's mainly knit on five millimeter needles to give you an idea of the weight of wool. So um, I believe it's made up of 49% acrylic and 51% comb wool, um, which I believe is the process wool goes through um, to make worsted wool. So I think, I believe when they comb it, it takes the short fibers out. and So it leaves this um, strong, soft wool. So yeah, really pleased with this. It's got a little detail on the cuff as well. The only thing I say is that I think I've knit it a little too tight there where I've stranded. So it's making the cuff just come out a little bit. But apart from that, I'm really happy with this top. And it's got a keyhole uh, neck at the back with a button on. It's very comfy and um, yeah, get a real vintage vibe. So what else have I been making? Well, like I say, I've been making some advent gifts for my daughters and these are the Tilda Angels. 
They're like three little maids in a row from the Mikado, aren't they? So um, I think that was, I think that was the song if I remember. So anyhow, um, yeah, I'll bring one angel to show you. So this is the Tilda Angel. It's a free pattern, and I think it's called actually it's got lots of threads on it. It's called the Autumn Angel, if I remember rightly. And if you go on the Tilda website. Um, and down and it's a little button on there saying free patterns if you go on there um, it's called the autumn angel and I thought well I'll just adapt it and make it a little bit more Christmassy so this is the Christmas angel so this I think this is some this is some quilting cotton I bought from Florida a couple of years ago I've used the Tilda uh, doll skin um, I just love this pattern. So basically, you you make this body is all in one. Usually, people use Tilda hair, or I've seen people use furry wool. I use this wool. It's called Funky. So, yeah, this is the first one I made, and I really like the effect because it gives that Christmassy angel look. But it was really difficult to actually. Um, sew through the fabric um, because it's it's like a thick cord. In fact, I'll get you the ball now and show you. Is the well, it's not even wool, is it? It's um, whatever I've knitted, whatever it is. It's it's like a cord. So if I bring it up close, you can just make out. It's like a cord with like this hairy stuff that's coming off it. So, and I, I bought this quite a while ago. It's Sirdar and it's called Funky Fur. I really do like the effect, but because it was a cord, it was difficult to actually pull through um, the, the doll skin. So um, I persevered and made this one. And then this was the next one I've, I, I uh, made. So, as you can see, like I say, the body's made all in one and then you make a skirt. Now, I did run out of this fabric. So, this is some fabric I purchased. It was a fat quarter pack I purchased from Hobby Lobby uh, when I went to the States. So, uh, and I just put a little trim around there, just to pretty it up. Um, now, I... I was going to use some wool for the hair and then I was going to put the funky wool through the hair thinking that would be easier but it wasn't so it did didn't quite work out that one didn't but I still think it looks nice with the grey wool and then the next one is this little lady and uh, Again, I've used a different fabric. Um, I purchased this one from Holly's Haberdashery. And um, I forgot where I got this fabric from, but it's it's got like gold stars on. And I edged it with some lace, top and bottom, just to match. And again, I've used the funky fur um, wool. <laughs> whatever you want to call it so there we go put some blush on and um, I've used I think it was this textile print I mean I've got you don't need a whole tub you just need the tiniest amount of fat I use a pen um, such as this I just take the lid off and dab the pen on the lid and then just dab uh, on for the eyes that's all you need so uh, yeah, my Tilda angels, and I think they look lovely.
may recall in my last vlog I was making some some little they were like stuffed ornaments um, and it was from um, a panel and it was called Scandi by Makawi. I believe this is now discontinued which is such a shame because they really are pretty and they had star shapes some round shapes a bird and a heart <laughs> and a heart so I've made these all up now and then I've used fishing line and uh, some beads I had from an old necklace and I've made three um, little hanging ornaments so I'll show you those. So this is one of the, the hanging sort of Christmas ornament I've made okay So, like I say, I've used this fishing line. I've got to finish the knot off a little bit more tidier than that. Um, I bought these wooden beads, and I think they're like a silver effect bead from Hobbycraft. And then the rest are from a necklace, what broke. So I thought I'd put the beads to good use. So there we go. I thought these would look really nice hanging up. So, uh, so yeah, three ornaments made. So my next finished make is the latte coat by Lisa Chemery for Fraginette Patterns. Now, you may recall on my last vlog, I had started to make this. So this is for my grandson. It's a hooded jacket, which I'm not showing it off to its best potential here. So I'll do a flat lay photograph, but basically, again, this is a seamless knit. So it's all knit, all in one. Um, there's a bit of detail on the sleeve end, garter stitch. I haven't knit the pockets. I'm going to leave that up to my daughter to decide whether she wants pockets on. It needs a, I'm going to need to block this to straighten it out after I've sewn the ends in. And the bottom also has this garter stitch. And I've grafted the hood together. Now what I really like about this, one of the unique design features on this little coat is this basket weave braid so the whole front of the coat and the hood okay has this lovely little finish so it's called basket weave apparently so I'll bring it up a bit closer and you can see oh yeah, basket weave it's called. Now, Lisa actually does um, a tutorial on YouTube for this. So if you go onto her website, Frogginet, you can actually click on to a link and she will show you how to knit this braid on. Okay. So, yeah, I was, um, I was, a, I was a little bit... Um, I was a little bit concerned because she does say that, um, you know, you have to fully concentrate and uh, and it's difficult once you make a mistake to actually rectify it. So I was a bit worried um, because there's a lot of stitches because you pick up all the way around uh, the front, the hood and the other front. So you've got a lot of stitches to contend with. Um, but I didn't make a mistake, I, I was fine. And um, I've just got to sew the toddles on as well. 
um, and the buttonholes are already in they're not holes they are actually buttonholes so yeah I'm really pleased with that and I'll show you in a little bit more detail the wall is um, Bergère de France again so I, I don't know what it is with me and Bergère de France but I do love this wool and the colourway is called Rhinoceros and it's knit in the Brisian 7 and I think the main part of the body if I remember rightly was on 6mm needles so I also used because it's knit in the round uh, well not it's not sorry because it's knit seamlessly seam, seamlessly so um, I knit the sleeves on um, DPMs so I use these higher highers I must admit at the very end after using bamboo I don't know what it is my fingers were a little bit sore but um, yeah I'm really pleased with that little mate so next up is this little cardigan it's in progress and it's called Norwegian Fur by OGE Designs now what happened initially is I, if you remember a couple of vlogs back, knit my granddaughter who was three years old a cardigan in this wool. It's called um, Baby Sparkle. It's a double knitting wool. It's acrylic and it's by the manu it's manufactured by Robin. Okay. Now I had initially six hundred grams and. Um, I only used I think it was about 300 for knit of this cardigan so I had quite a bit left and the idea was as now she's got a baby sister who's newborn I would make her baby sister my youngest granddaughter a um, um, little matching cardigan well when I say matching a cardigan in matching wool and a little bonnet and perhaps booties so I purchased this cardigan from a uh, pattern from Ravelry. It was by OGE Designs and it's called Norwe Norwegian Fur. And it looks absolutely beautiful because the raglan is done in this gorgeous pattern. And as you can see, it gives you the illusion of a Norwegian fir tree, which I believe that's why obviously the garment is named that. Now, I also um, download my bought patterns which I bought this one from Ravelry and I'll put a link in down below what I tend to do is I download them down to my Kindle app on my iPad you see and what I didn't realize is that the age range went from newborn and I think it goes right up to six or seven year olds if I remember correctly but the baby sizes are in one pattern and then the next range of sizes are in another pattern. So I didn't realise this because I downloaded it and what I must have done is flicked on to the second size range. So I'm knitting along and I, I'm, I had made a mistake on the raglan so I had to rip back and I think that's where I have moved the pattern along accidentally and I'm knitting for quite a long time I'm thinking this is taking a long time for a baby knit to find out that I was actually knitting at the size for the four to five year old so I carried on because I'd done all the raglan shaping by then um, and this bit obviously is knit in the flat because um, it's seamlessly as well there's no seams so you're knitting all that you see as one um, so I've carried on I've now got to the arm shaping so as you can see you put your sleeve stitches on hold after you've done the raglan shaping and then you pick them up 
and to I'm knitting these magic loop and so I'm having to knit the one row and purl another to give the garter stitch effect so my eldest granddaughter is getting another cardigan in the same colorway <laughs> never mind um, it just has the one button um, there's a one button all there it just has the one button at the top but I think this will look really nice with the um, little pair of jeans something like that so when I come to knit the next cardigan for her younger sister I will ensure that um, I'm knitting the right size for a start and I think I'm going to do that in either a cream or a fawn wool um, like the pattern suggests because it looks really pretty um, really pleased with this um, lacy raglan I think it looks quite effective and uh, yeah <laughs> hopefully I'll be able to show you the finished article soon it's taking eons to knit okay so not everyone has the time or inclination to knit and crochet um, it is quite a long process and sometimes we need a quicker alternative and I thought I'd show you my collection of jersey tops so the one I've got on today is the Sew House 7 toaster sweater. I think I've shown you this one before on a previous vlog. Um, if I remember, I'll link it up above. Um, this is a raglan um, top and I particularly like the neck. And uh, yeah, really comfy. The jersey I purchased from Holly's Haberdashery in Newcastle under Lyme. Uh, I like this one because it's got the nice thick cuffs and it's also got a nice thick band at the bottom. So yeah, the toaster sweater. I was going to make the matching skirt from the stitch book, from Tilly in the Button stitch book, but unfortunately I think she's no longer got this fabric in. So I'll have to see if I can get some more from somewhere else. So anyhow, the molly top we'll start with and um, this was a pattern brought out quite quite a, a while ago now, uh, maybe three or four years ago, I'm not quite sure. But it was um, by So Over It and they had a book called The City, City Break Capsule Wardrobe and I remember buying, purchasing that and you downloaded it and um, basically the idea was you could make a capsule wardrobe for you know go on long weekend breaks so um yeah and the only thing i've made from it so far is the molly top um right this one is um so i'll talk about the construction first uh, mo as most of you know i think most sewists have made the molly top it's nice quite nicely shaped um, it's got a front and a back and the sleeves are a drop sleeve. The only thing is with tops, I mean, they're fantastic, they're quick to sew up. The only thing I'd say is that you do get a bit of fabric waste because you're folding over your, your jersey and the back and the front are cut on the fold. Although your sleeves, you'll have enough room on the other side um, of where you've cut your top and back out but I do find that sometimes it um, you have quite a bit of jersey left over that's the only thing so um, but I save all my scraps up because um, you know I'm sure I can make some little trousers or a little top uh, from the scraps for my grandchildren but anyhow this is the molly top um, I particularly like how this neckband is sitting on this one this jersey is I think it's called a modal jersey I'll just show you the inside and this is before I got my overlock <laughs> it's sort of like if I bring it up a bit closer and sort of see it's really soft 
um, I purchased this one from Stitchy B. So that was an online shop in the UK. This one is actually a Molly dress. And this has been a real workhorse. I have worn this. Oh gosh. I can't think a week goes by where I don't wear this actual dress. It is so comfortable. I just love this dress. Um, I have worn this on previous vlogs as well. But really now, I mean, it hasn't pilled the fabric, but you know, it is getting war, should I say, worn. Uh, I bought this from, oh, I think it was about four or five years ago from the Stitching and Knitting show. <clears throat> I think it was Fabrics, it might have been Fabrics Galore or Fabric Land. But anyhow, um, bought quite a bit of this. And, um, yeah, I love wearing this with black tights, but it's gone that baggy now. It's had umpteen washes, goodness knows. Um, I'm thinking of teaming it with a black polo neck jumper, actually, to keep me extra cosy. But this has been a real good workhorse, this dress has. And um, it's one of my favourites. It really is. You know when you buy some fabric, it's nondescript really. And you just think, oh, I'll knock myself up something with this. And then you end up where it's one of your favourites. And um, yeah, <laughs> I'm always wearing this one. This is my next molly top I made. Now then, have you ever bought any fabric and you think, you see some fabric and you think that'll make a marvellous whatever. And then you end up forgetting what you've bought the fabric for and you make something else completely different. And this is one of those makes. I bought this fabric initially from Stitchy Bee again. Um, and I think it's um, a Pontaroma this one is. It's quite a stable fabric. And I think the idea was to make um, a cocoa top. There was something I was going to make with it. Completely forgot why I bought it and uh, decided to make a molly top the thing is the neck band although it looks like it's sitting quite nice on this uh, mannequin um the neck band when i wear it does bag a little bit uh, but apart from that i'm quite happy with the make it's in this breton stripe and when i turn it let's see Turn it this way, you can see that better. Um, it's yeah, it's seeming to to be quite neat on both sides. The seaming, and uh, yeah, it's another. the The fabric is really soft. It's beautiful, but like I say, I think this would have been better um, as a cocoa top. That's what I was going to make the Tillian buttons cocoa. Uh, not the dress, but uh, to make this as a top. So I'll just, I can show you a little bit better on this. Um, oops, mannequin here. The the actual shaping at the side. So like I say, it goes up and then, whoa, <laughs> goes down. So it's quite a nice shape. Like I say, you can't get enough of these tops. They're fantastic. They just whip up in no time. So this is this is the Freya top by Tilly and the Buttons from the book Stretch. And if there was any sewing book, I would suggest you to get. And this is the one. Stretch. It's in my top 10. It gives a... It just explains how to sew with knit fabrics and it gives you so many tips and it's so detailed it's well worth purchasing. Now one of the tops, the Freya top, this top can be altered and she shows you how so many different garments can be made just from the Freya pattern. Okay. For a start, there's three different necklines. This is called the mock neckline. Oh, it's double. Okay. There's also, I think, um, a roll neck one. I haven't made the roll neck yet. 
and there's also a cowl neck and cowls are my favourite type of neckline. And this is such a staple for your wardrobe. I mean, really, I mean, I don't know why. Well, I have got quite a few, but, you know, if you just have them in the basic neutral colours, you can pair them with anything. Jeans, pinafore, dresses, abs, trousers, anything. It skirts. It's a real wardrobe staple. So let's look at this one. Um, again, the back and front are cut on the fold. I prefer to have mine with long sleeves. Like I say, this is the mock neckline. It's beautifully, it, you know, it's really fitted. The way she um, explains everything to you. Yeah, and the fabric I purchased from Stitchy Bee again. Now, she has a range of jerseys Stitchy Bee does in her online shop. It's an online shop in the UK, okay. Um, and she calls these perfect jerseys and they really are soft. I've washed this many a time. Um, I used to wear this a lot at work. Um, yeah, it is really perfect. I finished this one off at the the bottom with um, a double a double needle. So if I just fold it over, you can see that stitching there. So this is my next frayer and I absolutely adore this colour. It's a beautiful mustard colour and I purchased again this fabric from Stitchy B. It's like a golden mustard and it really is nice. It's a very stable knit this one is. So um, it really keeps its shape well and as you can see it really, you can see a difference. This is the same pattern as the pink one but you can see this is more of a, a stable knit so it holds its shape a lot better so um yeah this again is one with the mock neckline very shaped and then fans out at the bottom it's beautiful absolutely adore this sweater yeah this one <laughs> is the fabric i purchased from hobby lobby um yeah it's not a bad quality jersey actually this one isn't i bought it from hobby lobby when i was on holiday in the states and uh, a lot of people actually compliment me when i wear this one they say how lovely it is so um i've had quite a bit of wear out of this the jersey isn't as as pilled a little bit now so and i actually um usually when I sew a neckband on uh, the join I always put at the back um, because I don't use labels and that helps me to find the back quickly and the, for some reason I put it at the side and I don't know why so I think next time I make a frayer I might put a little label in at the back just to because you need to, <laughs> so I can know, know quickly which is the back and which is the front but again um yeah, I really love this make as well. And as you can see, it's a lot softer jersey, so it's not as stable as um, the mustard one I've just shown you. And this is some green velvet I purchased. Do you know, I can't remember where I purchased this from, but it's like an emerald green colour. And uh, I thought this would look really nice. I do love velvet. I really do. And I thought this would look nice um, over the Christmas period. So, you know, quite inexpensive to make. Um, and you could turn this into a dress if you wanted to. But um, again, I've made just the, the top. And uh, yeah. I love these frayer tops. I can't get enough of them. So this is the next frayer I made. I have shown this before. And this frayer is actually not the top, but I've made it into the dress. So this version is the actual dress. Now I purchased this beautiful velvet. It's, you know, I, I love this velvet. And I purchased this from Fabric Godmother. And from time to time, she does have these patterned velvets on her website. 
so it's well worth having a look because they are absolutely beautiful to work with so I decided last moment that I would actually make the dress version. So that meant I didn't have enough fabric for the cowl. Because as you know, you know, when you sew with velvet and you cut out, you have to have the nap running the correct way. Some people say you should have the nap running up so it's nice and smooth. Some people say you should have um the nap running down okay so i have cut this out where the nap is running up because sometimes i find when the nap when it's running so it's nice and smooth when you stroke up now on sometimes if you have it where it's smooth when you stroke down it can catch on your coat and bring your top up that's what i found so i've made this with the the velvet going up okay so the smooth side going up now i didn't have enough for the cowl so i was a little bit naughty and um i think i sort of cut this um what so how it was cut i think i shortened the cowl that was it and um, I placed it differently on the velvet and I thought well no one's going to know well you do now because I've told you obviously but <laughs> now silver isn't really my colour I'm more of a, an autumn colour I like my golds and my bronzes but I couldn't resist buying this fabric I mean you know I do believe in colour analysis and I think you know I do like to buy fabrics that suit my colouring. However, sometimes you can limit yourself, can't you? And when you see something as gorgeous as this, you can't help but um, purchase it. But um, yeah, this is the one with the cowl neck. So it's such a different look, isn't it? Same pattern, it's just a different neck. Fantastic. So it's a. So I love this dress. The problem is for me is it's a little too short for my liking for for my for my figure and for my age group as well. So um, I'm going to purchase some black leggings because I think teamed with black leggings and some little black ankle boots, um, this will be a really lovely outfit. I'll bring the fabric up close so you can see in a little bit more detail this fabulous velvet. Now, for those of you who know me and have also watched my vlogs from earlier, you will know that this is one of my favourite tops. This again is the Freya with the cowl neck. But the, and the fabric again was purchased from Fabric Godmother. Um, I was on holiday in the States and she had this beautiful fabric come online, the silver and the bronze one. And I actually um, messaged her and asked them if they could um, put the fabric, but I purchased it, but could they uh, delay the delivery until I got home? And they did. And um, I absolutely love this. Now, this one is where the I've made this one first, and this is where the smooth side is going down. Okay. The thing is, it feels a little bit rougher so can you see the drag so it's smooth running down but the drag when I go like that with my hand you can see the drag so when you're wearing a coat you have to be a little bit careful because when you're moving about it can ride your top up much to my um, dismay and embarrassment when I went into a shop and um, I undid my coat I nearly bared all my uh, belly <laughs> so um, yeah I love this top it's it is one of my favorites absolutely adore it so yeah there are so many variations with this top it's so versatile and I can remember when it was first published um, everyone was going mad when this book was first published over that one and that is again it's the Freya whoops but it's got um, if I bring it up a little closer 
you can see it's got that ruffle so um and so basically it was just altered by having a ruffle sewn round so um so yeah it's a winner all round this top so i just thought i'd show you my collection of molly and freya tops so, uh, when i come to edit the video i realized i hadn't filmed um the fabric on. Oh, here it is so the first lot of fabric i've purchased is from sew over it just before christmas they had a 30 percent off sale so i took advantage and i've bought three yards of this lovely crepe and you know crepe's got a lovely drape so it's navy blue with a this looks more like a cream spot on it although it's showing up white but it is a cream colored more of a off-white cream spot and i thought i would make the haxby skirt from this Although um, I have ordered, uh, although I have got three yards of this, I just thought that if I change my mind, I can always make a dress. I bought two and a half of this, so I thought myself I'd make a long jacket or a coat. And this is a wool blend, and this is red. I also purchased some jersey. This is called Sunshine. And I purchased one and a half yards of this. I thought myself, I, I'd run myself up a top in this. So there we go. That's from So Over It. Now the sale, the 30% sale, all that fabric came to £114. But with the discount, I think I paid 79 Plus it was free postage. So I don't think that's um, a bad little haul. So my next fabric haul I purchased from Fabric Godmother, which is an online shop in the UK. And uh, she had... Well, one thing I like about Fabric Godmother, she always has some beautiful velvets on. And velvet is one of my favourite fabrics to wear. I ordered two yards of this um, velvet jersey. And this one's called Tory Green. It's rather regal actually doesn't it rather tudor but what i thought of doing is another freya top again with the mock neckline but i'm wondering if i can hack it together with the agnes because i do like the sleeve detail on the agnes top and i think when you've got um a bit of gather on your velvet it always shows up that richness of the nap so i thought that's what i would do so we'll see how that one goes and then i ordered a little bit more so this is three yards and this is again the tory rust color this time so we're not in the green it's a rust color so again this velvet i thought would make rather a nice long cardi coat sort of jacket you know long duster or whatever you want to call it so um yeah i thought that would really make a nice addition to my wardrobe so we'll see in the next vlog how i get on with that so yeah hope you all enjoying your holidays and um i'll see you soon bye mm -hmm.